Hi, I'm Christy Hugstad, author of Beneath the Surface, a teen's guide to reaching out when you or your friend is in crisis. When my husband Bill completed suicide by train a few years ago, he shattered both of our lives. And in that tunnel of unimaginable grief, I found that my only path forward was to dedicate my life to helping prevent this kind of tragedy from happening to anyone else. Unfortunately, we live in a world where suicide has become commonplace at every age and in every demographic. Rates of teen depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses are steadily rising. And along with them, the prevalence of suicidal ideation, attempts, and completions. Our teens today aren't just struggling. They aren't just hurting. Our teens are dying and they need our help. They are experiencing an unprecedented mental health crisis, one with no foreseeable cure except education and awareness. Speaking to teens, teachers, parents, and administrators about mental illness and suicide doesn't simply provide education. It can lead to early intervention, which will help save precious lives. It's important for all of us to be on the same page, to understand mental illness, know the warning signs and risk factors of depression and suicide, the hopelessness, isolation, declining grades, skipping school, changes in eating and sleeping patterns, the aggression and reckless behavior, the overwhelming fatigue. Think of it as your loved one becomes someone you no longer recognize. And knowing what to look for will empower you to act when you need to, to ask those important and direct questions. Like, have you ever thought about taking your own life? Do you have a plan? And then listen to the answers with love and without judgment and get them help if needed. When I look back to the year before Bill's suicide, I often ask myself, what could I have done differently? If I'd known the warning signs of depression and taken them seriously without trying to fix him, would my story have ended any differently? Bill bought into the stigma of mental illness. He thought his depression was a sign of weakness, not a treatable disease. And his shame and his silence cost him his life. And that's exactly what inspired me to write my latest book, Beneath the Surface. So there are no more bills. My book provides a lifeline to teens as it addresses issues our youth are facing today that can lead to depression and ultimately suicide, like cyberbullying, self-harm, substance abuse, peer, academic, parental, and self-pressures, gender confusion, technology addiction, depression, and anxiety. I also can include stories of real teens struggling with these issues, resources, what to do, where to go for help, and an important message of hope. A survey by the American Psychological Association found that today's teens are actually more stressed than adults. Technology plays a big part in this, and it can also lead to depression. Social media often presents picture-perfect lives that no one can actually live up to. Believing that social media portrays reality can lead to feelings of inadequacy and anxiety, especially in teens. Social media is also a big contributor to bullying, providing public and private means for bullies to taunt and shame their victims. Excessive use, whether smartphones, computers, or gaming, can lead to addiction, confining teens to their bedrooms to live in their own fictional world. So what are some coping strategies for those who are struggling with depression? First of all, stay connected. Make an effort to talk with friends and get out and participate in social activities even when you don't feel like it. 
and reach out and find ways to help others as this raises the dopamine level, that feel-good chemical in your brain. And dopamine is also released when you do things that make you feel good, like dancing, playing music, singing. Take care of yourself physically. Eat healthy. Get exercise, and it's so important to get adequate sleep. Challenge negative thoughts when they come. Step back and be an observer of your own thoughts. Put them on the witness stand and cross-examine them before you decide to believe them, because that is a choice. And if you find them not to be true, then let them go. If you feel that your symptoms of depression are worsening, don't suffer needlessly and alone. Reach out and get professional help. Suicide prevention is my life's mission, but I can't do it alone. We all need to work together, teens, parents, doctors, teachers, anyone with a teen in their life, to normalize conversations about mental health just like we address our physical health. Let's also advocate to make it mandatory in all schools in their curriculums and teach our youth that mental health issues are a normal part of life. Continually encouraging teens to reach out for help and addressing their struggles through direct, honest conversations is the only way to abolish the stigma of mental illness and save lives today and in generations to come.